Um, so we were, at the end of the last class, we were just talking a little bit about stage two. And um, I want to just make it a reminder that stage two is, um, the stage one was that God had consecrated the firstborn of Israel at the Passover to himself after he had the lamb die for them and they ate the lamb and so the firstborn was his. And um, then the, the second thing about that or the B part that we said was that um, the, they were his for sacrifice. Now I'd like for y'all to remember this because next week we're gonna have all those people back and I'd like to say, who can tell me that it and just watch their faces as all of y'all go, all hands go up and go, okay. So even raise your hand if you don't know, but just kind of slightly shake, <laughs> shake your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just, you know, the only thing keeps me from being a bald-faced liar is all this stuff right here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and so we're rolling here. <laughs> And, and uh, so they, they got out into the wilderness, which was where God said, let my firstborn son go that he may come into the wilderness and sacrifice and um, be with me. <clears throat> um, and they got in the wilderness and none of them showed any signs of the nature of the firstborn, the nature of the lamb that was on the inside of them. <clears throat> and so... Uh, and this next part, when we get down to it here, we will see the progression where God says, okay, if you're not going to be that, if you won't allow the firstborn, then we'll move on to something different. So that something different is stage two of him moving from the original firstborn from saved from Egypt to this. Uh, however, things progress to another level in stage two. <clears throat> in this stage... The God who redeemed them from death angel death in Egypt now redeems the same ones from firstborn death. All right. I don't know. I'm going to say this again, and you seem like you've got it, so that's good. I'm going to say it again because it's, it, it could be tricky. <clears throat> um, in, let's see. in this stage, the God who redeemed them from death angel death, that's in Egypt, now redeems the same from firstborn death. Anybody want to attempt to try to tell me what that means? <clears throat> okay. So, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we've got an inside person. This is an inside job working over there. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, this is really, really important that you get this. So I've got this, this little table here on my left representing Egypt. This one representing the firstborn coming out uh, into the wilderness. And in Egypt, <clears throat> there was a death. The death, uh, the death angel is what killed the firstborn of Egypt, right? All right. But they were saved the firstborn was saved from death angel death by the lamb that was slain, right? Right? Okay, so, so far we're just talking about this one table. <clears throat> but God in stage one made this, declare, this declaration. He said, you firstborn over here in Egypt that were redeemed from death angel death, you are now going to come out Come to me, and you will be given in sacrifice. Right? You see the two? Okay. So let me read it again, because that's the explanation. Let me read it again, see if you can fit it to the, to the tables here. <clears throat> in this stage, the God who redeemed them from death angel death, this one right here, <clears throat> in Egypt, now redeems the same ones from firstborn death. He, they, they would not live sacrificially by the lamb. Do y'all see that? You see how they, their attitude, everything about them in the wilderness was wrong. 
not just the firstborn, but all of them. And so <clears throat> God was saying, once they came out, I, since you are not the firstborn, not acting like the firstborn in the wilderness here, then I'm going to take that away from you. But if I take it away from you, you're just like Israel as if you weren't a firstborn. And you probably should die. But worse than that, worse than that, you, since you're not going to give yourself sacrificially in, as a firstborn, because they didn't, right? Y'all following this? They didn't give themselves sacrificially as a firstborn. I will redeem you from having to do that. I will redeem you from having to be a firstborn, from having to live sacrificially. For I'll redeem you from, from the thing that I literally saved you for to be able to do, <clears throat> that I redeemed over here and saved you from death in Egypt. I will now redeem you from even having to be my firstborn and having to be sacrificial. What kind of God do we serve? Okay. Next class, we'll really get into that. All right. So he redeems them from that death, which is their own special firstborn death. What is their own special firstborn death? I was, I was saved by the blood and, by the, and I ate the lamb in Egypt. Now I'm called to live sacrificially to God and I've been redeemed from that. He redeems them from that death, which is, and that firstborn death is their own special death. It was a special death. It was meant to mean something. It wasn't just dying in Egypt because you didn't, you, you wouldn't honor the lamb and the blood. <clears throat> um, so I wrote, they are redeemed or exempt from that death, the firstborn death, because the firstborn of animals and of the harvest will now fully replace them. Okay. So God said, all right, since you're not, since you're not going to be my firstborn, I will do what he calls, because um, there's a mixture of several things that I'm not going to go into now because it just confuse you. But... He could use, you could use redemption money. You remember that? If anybody read that in the script, redemption money and get out of it. Or an animal sacrifice and get out of it. And that sacrifice, that sacrificed animal would now be the firstborn. And take that, relieve that from the person who didn't want to live that way. That's a pretty good God who would, you know. All right, so they are redeemed or exempt from that death because the firstborn of animals and of the harvest will now fully replace them. All right, stage one, firstborn in Israel that was redeemed by the lamb. Stage two, firstborn in Israel no longer is the firstborn this lamb or this redemption money or all this becomes the firstborn. Okay? D does anybody see a problem with that, though? Good, because that's what we're going to deal with next class. <clears throat> all right? Um, the sacrifices for firstborns is different from the main sacrifices. Okay, I want to make this, this point. There were um, all, in Israel, there were all kind of sacrifices that didn't have to do with the firstborn, okay? There was peace offerings, and there was, um, uh, what, praise offerings, wave offerings. There's all these different kind of offerings. There was um, trespass offerings. There were sin offerings. 
most of what I named has nothing to do with the firstborn and them being redeemed. That was a special thing that was done only for firstborns. It was a special sacrifice only for the ones who should have lived it when they came out of Egypt and didn't. So I'm saying that to say, when you read the scripture, number one, don't read every offering that it talks about as being the redemption for the firstborn, because it's not. Okay. There's Again, there's sin offerings. There's peace offerings, there's thank offerings, there's all this kind of stuff that has nothing to do with the firstborn. However, whether it gets in now, we will get into it more, but I want to try to plant the seed to say there are a bunch of scriptures. There are a bunch of scriptures that we read simply as sin offerings or as other offerings that belong to to the redemption of the firstborn. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes when we're reading to, to go, hey, there could be something different in these scriptures. Okay? Amen. All right, so uh, I didn't finish this sentence here. The sacrifices for firstborns is different from the main sacrifices for all for all burnt offerings, sweet savor offerings, and sin slash trespass offerings, there's, the, those don't all fall into the category of for, uh, firstborn. But all of these kinds of offerings had to be firstborns also. Okay, so it's funny because just about all the offerings tell you if you're going to get a lamb, get a firstborn lamb. If you're going to get a calf, get a firstborn, a bullock, it's called in the King James. If you're going to get that, get a firstborn bullock. It's funny that the firstborn is redeeming everything in his death. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's go to stage three. All right. So, anybody want to tell me? What stage one was? Raise your hand. Uh, Jim? That's the A part and the B part. Okay. For sacrifice. Right. That's the, the important part is there's for sacrifice. All right. So stage one is... God claimed the firstborn as his own. Got it? Write it down so that you can open it up when class starts next week. <clears throat> B under that is, under stage one, is that what was his in the firstborn, what the firstborn that belonged to him was his for sacrifice. All right. Stage two then. All right. Stage two is the firstborn that was called to live that way, to be an example, was to manifest that lamb that they ate, didn't do it in the wilderness. It was a terrible, terrible thing. So God changed from being the firstborn of Egypt that was redeemed, said, you're no longer that. I redeem you from that. And now these sacrifices redeem you from being the firstborn, but it's as if those sacrifices are now the firstborn. Okay? So that's why I call this uh, offering of the first, uh, what is it, uh, the exchanging of the firstborn in three stages. Because now we're going to get to the third stage because God says after Stage two has been going for a while. Maybe this will sound familiar to you. Sacrifice and offerings I would not. That is, that is not adequate as my firstborn son. All right. So what he does, uh, let me read it. Finally, in stage three, the sacrifice of the firstborn that had been replaced with the sacrifice 
of firstborn animals and of the harvest is now replaced with, just to see if anybody knows, what was the third thing that it was replaced with? Levites, the Levites of all things. Okay, the priesthood, the priesthood. And that was an amazing step forward. Can you see how it would be? That was an amazing step forward. Now, it's still a shadow, amen? It's still a shadow. But the Levites... Okay, all right, so uh, finally in the, well, let's see. But, uh, finally in stage three, the sacrifice of the firstborn that had been replaced with the, sacri the sacrifice of firstborn animals and of the harvest is now replaced with the Levites. They now bear the place of the firstborn. They now bear the place of the firstborn. All right. So God's mind never changed. The firstborn that came out of Egypt, let my son, my firstborn, go out of you. I put the lamb in you and told you to eat it. Now let him go. Quit holding him back. Quit keeping him trapped within you. Let my son, my firstborn, go that he may come and sacrifice to me. All right? They didn't do it. They didn't do it. So they get out in the wilderness and they mess it up. So God says, all right, you know, he's, he's dedicated to his firstborn son. So he goes, okay, since you're such a mess, I'm going to have, have to have something die for you as the firstborn to replace you as the firstborn and also to save you from having to be sacrificial. So what does that mean if they're not, they're no longer the firstborn and they don't have to be sacrificial? What does it mean they're going to live like now? Two, two, yeah, everybody else, two groups came out, remember? There was just Israel who didn't, the lamb didn't die for them because they weren't going to die. The lamb died only for the firstborn, Okay. So they were delivered from bondage, amen? And God said, I have heard your cries and I've come to deliver you. But he didn't redeem them. He redeemed the firstborn. All right. So if the firstborn now that was redeemed by the lamb, if they uh, are no longer that, then they're just like everybody else, like Jim said. They're just... They're just delivered. They're not redeemed in the, in the cleanest word of that. We're not talking about they're going to go to hell and all that stuff. We're talking about truly redeemed unto God. You remember that? There's many places. The book of Revelation is one of the best. And hath redeemed us unto God, not from hell. See, talking about the firstborn. See, this is going to crop up. I'm telling you, this has got so much to it. It's going to keep cropping up and you're just going to go, oh my God, it's everywhere. All right, so um, let me read that last sentence and finish it. They now bear the place of the firstborn and they sacrifice their earthly lives for living unto God in daily sacrifice and constantly giving of sacrifice. Right? The Levites. That's what they do. All right. So if I had a chart, if I had a chalkboard, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. But anyway, uh, <laughs> this chart. <laughs> uh, this chart, stage one, firstborn son given in sacrifice, A and B, of course. Stage two, animals, et cetera, are substituted uh, or redeem them, redeem the firstborn. Stage three, the tribe of Levi replaces all others. You going to remember that? Are you going to, if you don't, are you going to be able to act like it? <laughs> Hands go up, okay? And just go, oh, my God, y'all are the best students I've ever had. <laughs> All right, let's pray. <laughs> Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit because he wants to pour, pour on us. He wants to pour out in us. And, 
He wants to make this all quickened and alive in us and not just facts. But Father, right now, the facts are important because they are the scriptures and it is the word that, that, is, um, that is laid as the foundation so that we may have the spirit of God open our eyes to the full meaning of all of that. Father, we thank you. We want to know your son. We want you to get your son, your firstborn son, out of us. And we want to learn how to let him go. Help us as we proceed on this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, everybody.